Wow, greetings, greetings, greetings. Internet, came every day, people of the world. <laughs> I don't know where to begin, <laughs> it's been a minute. But yeah, I've been doing a lot of work with Native American, Aaron Wallace, and uh, we've actually come a long way. <laughs> it's like, it's like kind of surprising how far we've come. We've come a long way, and there's a lot of shit going on. And the past few times I've been to Aaron, and it's di then it runs to digital. Like, how the fuck does this work? It has like a little memory. This? Yeah, is this it has like a little a, memory card in there. Okay, so it's not like a. It's not like the. It's like, are these like the new takes on like the traditional camcorder? No, I bought this in 2017. Oh shit! So this is like vintage. <laughs> yeah, it's vintage. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. <laughs> We've come a long way. Yeah, but it has a fisheye, which is like. Sick. I mean, can't. The thing I was discussing about a camcorder um, with my cousin Ricky is that its excited. sole purpose, everything about it, is to hold and record video. Yeah. Where like your phone is not meant to just do that, it's you know. But this goes like you can put it straight on the internet, whatever you want. But this is like purely meant to capture moments, you know. So what we're capturing today? Wow, it looks dope. This is big slime, everybody. Everyone say hello to Big Slime. We've come a long way. You about to get slimed. slimed. But today, we are doing, let's start with this one. It doesn't really matter where we start. We, Aaron Wallace and I, are finalizing the new Disfiguring the Goddess album. And we're just, we're just jumping right into it. Aaron Wallace and I have been through so much shit. Like, I don't even know where to describe it. We've come a long way. Yeah. We've spent a lot of time in this room, and now we have this thing out of nowhere, seemingly. And we're not gonna catch you. You already missed it, because we left you out. But now we're we're getting back into it. Yeah, so welcome, greetings, greetings, greetings. Greetings, greetings, greetings. Yeah, see, this is a vibe. Yeah. You know? Like we could we... easily put that up there, no, yeah. no problem. All right, we're doing a test render. We've gone through the works with this guy on how to mix vocals and we chose to basically say that we need to buy that yeah. when we record next instead of mixing. See, the philosophy with a lot of stuff with this disfiguring record and with the record Aaron and I are doing is we're all focused about what's going in. So we basically use this for everything, for vocals, for guitars, and it sounds great. The vocals are just the DI though, so that's why we're having these issues with the vocals right now. And like, I get basically just experimenting with A being how much compression we're using after it's been recorded. But essentially, we want to record it with compression, which this you could do it with this, but we didn't. Yeah. And then this is the other step of the digital or the analog stuff that we're. So there's what goes into the computer. And then what goes out of the computer to the speakers. So at the very end of the mix, it's basically going to this first, and then to it back in through limiter, and then to the speakers. So we're trying to get as much analog or as much good shit going into the computer initially. Then once it's in there, not doing anything over the top with the processing until it's all the way done, and then it goes into this. Which this stuff you wouldn't... I mean, I guess you could record with this. I don't know. Yeah. I guess you could, yeah, I guess you could record vocals through that. I don't know anyone that records vocals with a VCA compressor. Nah. Because that's a FET compressor. That's yeah. like what you want, you know? I mean, you could do bass on this, but we don't... Yeah, it's not, yeah. It's, again, it's not the yeah. purpose. Again, that would be, you know, bass is one track, vocals are a bunch of tracks. I put that on the bass, sounds great. Dude, this is, this is looking good. So when you're doing this real-time stuff, it's like actually... <laughs> It's actually playing because it has to record through this. Um, I've got the Pro L limiter on it with the 32 sampling on it, and that can sometimes spike my CPU to get everything to kind of choke. And it, you can hear it in the audio because it's real time. If you're doing it off off time, it doesn't matter. But so we're looking for essentially that because if if that is good then we basically don't have to do it like a mastering session. We can just kind of like render it out of the project, which would be way easier. I mean, pros and cons. Like the pro the con I see with doing the mastering all in one session is 
all the different presets for this. Yeah, versus you know? if we just do all of the pre-masters in one mastering session. Yeah. It's easier to blanket everything across and like A, B through. Yeah. You know? But like right here, it's like this gain Dude. is what's clipping this. Mm -hmm. And so we kind of have that set. So it's like... I don't so know. I don't want. I don't, we're gonna do that thing where we have to do make a preset for each, each track, track with yeah. that. We'll have to remember each. <laughs> yeah, that's the down, That's the, I mean. That's the downside. And we the we screwed up with that with Big Chocolate a couple times, yeah, not yeah. getting the right preset. And yeah. that was only five tracks. This is eight. Yeah, and we'll also we screwed up by kind of just like blanketing it across and not like, you know. Well, I mean, I guess you can save the presets because this is does have the you know yeah the digital the digital aspect, but you know especially with with the EQ. I mean, like, if we fuck with this at all, we need to make sure we take a picture of our settings. Because yeah. you can't recall if you if you don't remember. Yeah. You know? Oh, one CPU dropout. It's toast. <laughs> it's toast. Yeah. So Abandon. Abandon. Yeah. <clears throat> it's all, we just added an extra hour to our day, or two. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was thinking we should probably mess around. I think these are the EQ settings, but we never even, like, Tried whenever to. you tried, yeah. So let's let's have a look. If we can get everything to sound that good, which I don't see why not. I think the the sauce is getting the levels right, but it's like everything's gonna be the same levels across all the boards, same drums in every song. Yeah. So I don't see why we'd have this big flux, you know what I mean? Exactly. Which car should we do? See your car, yeah. you know it better, you know. Yeah. Like, I know what my car sounds like, and that's how I car test a lot of my shit, but... True. I like... This has bows in it. There's only one thing that... That sometimes, like, the certain frequency will, like, make it sound like it's, like, distorting. Yeah. I have some kind of, like, weird thing like that. I yeah, isn't that weird? In there. That beat, dude. Yeah, Dana, Dana. That was really hard to do vocals on. That was the hardest part, vocals. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> it's ribbon, bro. thing I can hear is the kick almost sounds so too big. big. Yeah, I was gonna say it's a little it kind of loses the snare a little bit too. But the kick does sound so maybe that low boost that we did sounds sick in there, but Well it sounds bit. really good when the bass is happening too. Like when, yeah. when the kick's not consistent, you know what I mean? Can you automate that? A lot of people do automate their kick drums when it's doing different things. <laughs> Sounds dope right there. 
when everything gets handed again, it gets a little lost. Yeah. 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 That's how it's It's like, this is, like in the context of the whole album, how much of the album has like these fast double kicks on it? Yeah, yeah, that's And like, true. If, if, if not the whole album has shit like this, which I think a lot of it does, that's where it's like... It doesn't really matter. Yeah, and then it's like, oh damn, this part's nuts, you yeah, know what I mean? that is true. Because this shit sounds great here. Like that part is specifically like because it, it like the guitars are still going. Yeah, going heavy. And, and like when when the drums cut it cut out, the low end is like super, super sick. Yeah, yeah. So maybe just stylized to keep it. Yeah. Either way, it sounds pro as fuck. Do you have the old render? Oh yeah. Like that's something too with like a lot of like. You know, that's the funny thing about recording and mixing and engineering and stuff. It's like, people will write a song like this, and then when they go to mix, they think the mix is going to make it sound all good. But it's no, like, no, it's, it's how you wrote, wrote the, the song. song. It's exactly. like, if you don't want that much low end energy, then don't use fucking so low end. Yeah, the biggest so double kick in the world. Yeah, and this, exactly. That's, you know, there's always like, the neck, the best is always yet to come kind of kind of shit. You always learn from everything you do. Oh, 100%. But Which like, is so annoying, but... What we're learning, I think, and what I'm most definitely learning in this, it's like, especially because listening, so look at our project, listening between song one and what else we were doing, like, you, you, I could just hear, bro. I'm like, I can hear that the pickups are different. I can hear that it wasn't even really sent through the quad cortex originally. Yeah. I can hear that it was reamped, and that's fucking strange. Like, because this, the the original DI signal path didn't come through that. It came through the fucking focus right. Mm-hmm. So I can tell. Oh, yeah. I can tell the difference. Where? Okay, here, here we are. Okay, final mix at Cameron's house. This is what we had before. Or this is what I had walking into the session tonight today. Same problem. Yeah. But not nearly as dope. Yeah. Probably something you could just EQ out then if you well, really a, a wanted to. A lot of people to. will automate the kick drum to, to be, be just be like lower. less, more quiet on that part. But I'm also thinking too, it's like, I mean, we could try that. Like to get it to like. It, it would just be like a, a dB or two down. Yeah. You know what I mean? This is the kind of stuff that's like. I don't know. Maybe we should do another song or two. Yeah, and then, and then, and then come it. back to it. Because at the end of the day, though, like you said, it creates a vibe. And at the, yeah, and I think in the dynamic this, of the record, it too at, could be sick. Exactly. And at the and at the point, like at this point, with what we're working with, it's going to sound as like it sounds fucking pro as fuck. Totally. Outside of that, at where we are now, is stylized pro. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like okay, we have the pro sound. But how do we specifically want to stylize what it is? That's stylized. Am yeah. I right? You know what I mean? It's not bad or anything. It's just a different vibe. It's like choosing a different distortion or a plate reverb over this. Or You know what I mean? Like it's... Back in the day, I, when I used to do a lot of double kicks like that really fast, I would take the whole velocity of them and just like drag them down. Gotcha. So they weren't... So it's hitting Yeah, hard. maybe that's a thing with, with these... That could be done. I don't, I don't know. I know there's not the velocity isn't like straight 127 across. Yeah. Pretty much anywhere. So like that could be something to to think about. Pay attention to. It humanizes but it's, it a little it's, more. It's almost like you, you should pay attention to that kind of shit when you're like recording. Recording. And doing the original shit. Yeah. And that's like, you know, that's the catch of like why the repetition is so important. Because like this, the premise of this whole record was like, okay, get everything going in as good as possible. That's why, that's why the pre-master sounded so fucking good. 
you know, the, the, the zero mix, everything at zero kind of thing. And that's why these sound so good is because just an elevated version of that. But that's yeah. when you like, when you get to the, like this cutting edge where you're like, every little decibel is like really important. Well, this is where you hear like, oh, the kicks are too blanketed, you know? Now when you do it next time, you're just gonna like be a little more aware of that. I mean, let's get back in there. And, yeah, dial it. Yeah. Let's do a couple more songs. I agree. You yeah. Uh, you getting hungry at all? I can order some. Yeah, so we've been in here now. We're two tracks down. We did take down those kicks, but now we're working on one of the singles. I call it that because we have a video. Fire, 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 fire. Trying to get like... And this has a different mix on it. The guitars are like 12 so many tones down. Sounds great. But the album sounds different now. So. But Aaron and I are starving. You know, one of the things I want to remind everybody, we've come a long way, is that the thing that burns the most calories in your bod is your brain. Did you know that? Did I ever tell you that? Yeah. How they had that, they did that, that chest competition and they yeah. were monitoring everyone's calories. And the brain, and they, yeah. Everyone was burning like thousands of calories in there just sitting there playing chess. Dude, brain food is a thing. I feel like when you're studying for school or whatever, like having the, oh, right, yeah. having the right snacks to eat all the time. And that's why I always have chocolate milk over here. It's like how much more calorically dense can you get than chocolate milk? These animals know what's up. This one loves the fish, obviously. This is gonna be like an hour long camera day video. It's a docu it's a mockumentary. <laughs> <laughs> but it's real. We're actually yeah. <laughs> We're really it's a it's a mockumentary, but it's actually real. <laughs> this is the nicest weather we've had since Monday. <laughs> Well, Mon Monday was be way better than this. It it's cold out. We had like snow the past couple days. And snow is cool and all, but not in April. I'm way over I mean, Even though it's kind of a normal thing, I'm way over it. Yeah, now it's time for... I'm sick of it. I'm sick of it. <laughs> She's like, all right, what's that? Yeah. Mm, let me smell that. <laughs> That's what she said. Little would love this camera. <laughs> I knew it. She loves it. I knew you'd love it. 6.30. I think we're 5 out of out of 8. Five, yeah. Are we 5 out of 8 already? Yeah. And the hard ones are mostly behind us. Uh, we have one. This one should be easy because we did this one here already. Yeah. But we still have to switch around some stuff. Yeah, to do some stuff. Okay, yeah, that's the one we kind of already fucked with. And then the other two should be easy too, because it's just the swapping is the stuff I haven't done. Mm -hmm. But the thing I haven't done with them that I need to check is when I was at my house reviewing these this week as like my last home review, I did was like kind of like adapting some of the levels of the synths with the the new EQ. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> And that sounds so good. So, what the fuck? Aaron and I are talking about how we should need to make a promo video for this thing. First we need to focus. Yeah, it's like Instagram promo video. <laughs> Brutal Mountain Studios. Fully mastering unless we know you. Fully <laughs> <laughs> mastering unless we know you. This would be a funny Instagram video. It's not gonna do anything. Yeah, just just on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, encode. Hey, no CPU problems. Yeah. Yeah. So we're we're in the nitty gritty of the mastering session now, where we're like, what sample rate should we do? And we're like, let's just do 96. Well, not let's just do Mixbus TV. Shout out Mixbus TV. 
always guiding us and he's like if you're using analog gear do 96 but it's like can we what can we do with the 96 let's let's add this to um the shit now that says 96 <laughs> that's so high the mp3 says 45 48 48 yeah we're talking about the sample rates i mean i can always write the orchard an email you know ask him yeah see if jordan Moffy knows her, yeah, so you just hit up Jordan. She'll her audio. tell you right away. Yeah, shout out Jordan Moffey. Shout out The Orchard. <laughs> Here, now that the compressor is actually being used, we'll do the promo video. If it ever decides to focus. I forgot about that with camcorders. It's all, it's all shitty looking. Brutal Mountain, Brutal Mountain, Brutal Mountain, Brutal Mountain. <laughs> big slam, big slam, big slam. Yeah. Slam, slam worldwide bands. Use brutal sound mastering. So we just finished the disfiguring masters. They sound great on everything. They actually sound really cool. <laughs> and then we we did a test master on uh, one of Aaron's new tracks, and sound crazy. They're get, they had the pre-masters, they're gonna get masked by someone else. We'll be like, we have those gears set up, so we let's just do a, a test. We want an A, B. A, B. A, B. That'd be big. I want an A, B, R master from the that mastering. Guy. Yeah, and it'd be big for Jeremy, too. Yeah. Um, And then we just went and watched, like, gear videos and looked up crazy expensive pieces of gear for, like, an hour. <laughs> yeah, dream gear. Yeah, and then we didn't even film any of the final master shit. We filmed enough, like, you got a vibe of it, and... But we were dialed in. Yeah, I thought it would be nice to film this part. Good night. <laughs> <laughs> and then I always just turn the EQ off in the back, you know, before I. I need a me I need a muscle memory. This I need a muscle memory. Okay, there. Good night, big slime. <laughs> You did a good job today. Good <laughs> Look at it. Looks fits perfectly on that piano bench. It does actually. It looks like it's a part of it. It's pretty nuts. The Yamaha bench. We've come a long way. 